Today we're going to be talking about dispatch queues. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the difference between concurrent, serial, sync, and async attributes of a dispatch queue. Before we jump into it, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's get into this. So I recently shared this uh, piece of code on my social medias about a queue and basically the order that these elements will be printed. So we're going to actually take this example and we're going to dissect it and understand the differences of what actually happens here. So I just went ahead and copy and pasted the code that I shared. Let me just talk through it very briefly. We create a instance of a dispatch queue by passing in a label that identifies it. Then we have some print statements in here in a variety of configurations. We have an async call on this queue and we print one and then we nest a sync and a sync to print two and three. Subsequently, we have another to print four and five. Now the answer to this uh, question of what the print order will be is actually just one. Now, why is it one? And this is what we're gonna dig into in this video. Now, the reason that it's only one is because by default, a dispatch queue is initialized as a serial queue. So the first concept that we are going to cover here is serial versus concurrent queues. So I'm gonna stick a comment up here of serial versus concurrent. And this concept scares a lot of people for a reason because the naming sounds a little confusing. However, it's pretty self-explanatory once you understand. A serial queue is a first in first out principle. In other words, you can only do things in order one at a time. Once something happens or starts happening, that task must finish before the next thing in that queue can happen. In other words, if I come here and I say queue.async, let's go ahead and say, task one started, we're going to print out task one has ended. We'll also go ahead and copy and paste this and change this to task two and task two ended respectively. If you go ahead and hit pause and run in your actual environment, in this case, my playground, ignoring all this nonsense to the bottom, you'll see that the order is maintained. We start task one, we end task one, we start task two, and then we end task two. The benefit of a serial queue is you can guarantee the order that certain operations occur. Now, this is conversely different from a concurrent queue. To make a queue concurrent, you're going to specify an attribute of this queue being concurrent by specifying the attributes arguments here. Now that we have this as a concurrent queue, if I go ahead and clear this out and I hit run again, and we take a look at what has happened here, you'll notice that first task one started, then immediately tasks two started. And in this case, the uh, finish order of the tasks are in order, but it could have been the case that task two ended before task one. Let's say task one took longer. So the key difference here is when you have a dispatch queue that is concurrent, you can concurrently start and kick off work. Now that doesn't guarantee the work is going to end in the order in which it was started. So key difference, serial, FIFO, first thing that gets queued up, that thing must end before the next thing gets executed, and concurrent basically parallelizes. Now there's another key concept that I want to dig into a little bit here, and that is the concept of sync and async. You might have noticed, or you might have seen it before, that on a queue, particularly with the main queue, if you are deep into iOS development, we say queue.async. In some instances, you might see queue.sync as well. What is the core difference between these two uh, attributes and ways to actually schedule a work on a given queue? So I'm gonna come down here and just jot a comment down for myself. So sync versus async. The key difference here in the takeaway is a synchronous a uh, piece of work that is scheduled onto a queue will block the thread, or block in this case the queue, and lock it from taking in any other work until that work is done. In other words, regardless of if this is concurrent or serial, in this case it's concurrent, we're going to go ahead and make this sync, and we'll make this sync as well. And before I go ahead and actually hit the play button down below, I want you to take a moment and think about what you think is going to actually print out. So we're gonna go ahead, pause this, and give it a print, and we'll take a look. We're actually gonna see at this point, task one started, then task one ended. Task two started, and task two ended. Now this looks awfully familiar. If you think back to our serial queue example, this is the exact same output that we got. Now why is it the exact same output that we got? It's because we are uh, conducting this work in a synchronous manner, even though this is a concurrent queue. Now while this concurrent queue 
uh, can take in asynchronous work that it can kick off in parallel. We explicitly have specified it is a synchronous block of work, so it'll be synchronized in which the order that it accepts the work onto the queue. So that's basically the two concepts I wanted to briefly touch on today. Very important when you think about threading, when you think about concurrency and writing out complex applications, when you're dealing with things like networking, race conditions, and other various issues that developers come across in their day-to-day -day basis. Just to recap here, we've got our serial versus concurrent queues, as well as async and sync ways to actually schedule that work. Once again, if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you click away. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. And let me know in the comments what you guys think uh, would be a helpful uh, route to continue on with these concurrency related videos. Always looking for feedback from you guys and want to make things that you guys get value from. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.